for that. That's good. Uh, we can say yes to a chance of rain on Tuesday and Wednesday. That's good news. We can say mm -hmm. yes to a very cool Christmas. We're looking at 60 on Christmas Day. Uh, and speculated there was a small chance we might get some wet weather come Friday and Saturday as well. So, there you go. That wraps it up for Absolutely. That's it for Special Edition. We'll see you back here at 11. Can't wait to see you then. Good evening and welcome to a special edition of the KMIR News, Our Desert Past. Tonight we're going to look at just a few of the thousands of stories in our rich history here in the desert. KMIR News, along with our friends at the Palm Springs Historical Society, have chosen just a few stories, just the tip of the iceberg, if you will, to feature in tonight's special presentation. We begin with the story of one of the pioneers, one of a handful of women instrumental in the creation of the village. The village that we now know as Palm Springs. Across the country and probably across the world, women with vision have been the unsung heroes in developing communities. In Palm Springs, the success of the city is greatly credited to a few women who had the tenacity and the resourcefulness to create a world class resort. One of the women who built this town is Palm Springs pioneer Zaddy Bunker. In 1913, Zaddy opened up Bunker's Garage right on old Highway 99, where Palm Canyon Drive and Tockwitz Canyon now sit. Zaddy had just learned that the county had passed bonds to pave the highway from Banning to Indio. They knew there was an automobile garage in Banning and one in Indio, so Zaddy and her husband decided Palm Springs would be the perfect location for a repair shop. There was only three cars in Palm Springs when they opened their shop. And um, so they, they were definitely um, forward thinkers. Sure. And uh, up until until their their garage business actually took hold, Ed Bunker worked for um, one of the builders, Alba Hicks, and uh, did construction work. Zaddy found other ways to supplement the family income. The Desert Inn's owner, Nellie Kaufman, another Palm Springs pioneer, paid Zaddy 25 cents an hour to sew for her. She also became the first woman in California to get a chauffeur's license. She used her makeshift pickup truck and transported tourists and goods into town from the train station. And whenever they could, the bunkers purchased one parcel of land after another on Palm Canyon Drive in the early 1920s. So she would just keep buying property and um, developing it, buying property and developing it. So their business just kept growing. You know, it was a family business and it just kept growing. Zaddy was involved in many community events and organizations. Plus, she knew that someday she wanted to fly. She knew that since she saw her very first airplane. And at 65 years old, she decided that she wanted to fly. So she got her pilot's license, she earned her wings, and that was kind of her retirement adventure, was that she, she flew. She, um, broke the sound barrier in a, in a Saber jet. On February 23rd, 1959, Zaddy flew into Burbank under the pretense of attending an aeronautical aviation meeting and was met by a television camera crew and Ralph Edwards himself. As the plane taxied up to a prearranged spot, Edwards walked up to Zaddy as she disembarked saying, Zaddy Bunker, this is your life and millions of people from coast to coast turned on their TV sets that night to watch the life story of Palm Springs flying great-grandmother and Palm Springs pioneer Zaddy Bunker. At 80-something years old, she went to College of the Desert and she was taking classes so she could be an astronaut. I mean, she was, she was pretty fantastic, gal. Pretty fantastic. We head now to the Central Valley for our next look back to El Paseo Drive in Palm Desert. It's called the Rodeo Drive of the Coachella Valley, and that's not by mistake, because that's exactly what it was designed to be. A boulevard of luxury shops was the vision of Cliff Henderson. Henderson purchased 1,700 arid acres of pure desert more than 60 years ago, miles from civilized Palm Springs. And imagine a town centered by an opulent shopping district, in 1946, he began making it happen, fueled by a dream. Henderson built a grand thoroughfare he called El Paseo, 
and punctuated it with stately palm trees nearly a decade before the first store would even open. 103-year-old Edith Moray opened one of those first stores. Oh, I thought it was beautiful. I lived in Oregon and I didn't know about deserts. And my sister and I came down and uh, we were very impressed. We went to Hollywood first and then we decided we didn't want to be that in that lifestyle. Right. So somebody said, well, it's very nice on the desert. So we thought we'd come down and, and check it out. At the time, Palm Desert, or Palm Village as it was known, consisted of a few homesteads and a lot of sand. Henderson developed Shadow Mountain Club, which elevated the town's profile and became its sophisticated social center, creating a celebrated place for the blossoming Coachella Valley. And as always, Hollywood played a big role in the development of El Paseo. And I joined the tennis club and they made me a junior member. And I had so many of these glamorous boyfriends that were down here. Edith's shop was one of the first of dozens of shops and restaurants that would open over the years filling the empty desert that once surrounded the oddly paved four-lane street in the middle of nowhere. We, we really enjoyed it. It was like everything else, I think a little nicer than it is today. Today, El Paseo buzzes with activity year-round and remains a haven for shopping and dining. The popular avenue features luxury retailers, fine eateries, art galleries, personal and professional services. Cliff Henderson died in 1984 at the age of 88, but he did live to see the early results of his master plan for this smart shopping district that delights locals and draws millions of visitors every year. Hollywood and the desert have long been associated. The Coachella Valley has been a retreat for the rich and famous since the early 20th century. And with Hollywood comes scandals. One of those scandals came in the very early days of Hollywood in the desert. Think George Clooney or Brad Pitt, Cary Grant or Clark Gable, and then triple it. And you get an idea just how big a star Rudolph Valentino was. In the days before talkies, Valentino was our first movie heartthrob. He was a sensation, he was sexual, and he was controversial. And like many of our stars today, he was scandalous. In 1922, Rudolph Valentino came to Palm Springs following his marriage in Mexicali to Natasha Rambova, who was a set and costume designer in Hollywood. The problem was, Valentino couldn't legally marry Natasha Rambova, real name Winifred Hugnut. Though he was divorced at the time, California law said you had to be divorced for at least a year before you could remarry. In 1919, just before the rise of his career, Valentino impulsively married actress Jean Acker, who was involved with actresses Grace Darman and Ala Nazmova. Acker became involved with Valentino in part to remove herself from the lesbian love triangle. Quickly regretting the marriage, she locked Valentino out of their room on their wedding night. The couple separated soon thereafter, and the marriage was never consummated. The couple, though, remained legally married until 1921, the same year Valentino married Rambova, which is bigamy. There was a big deal about it, like the law was actually seeking witnesses, and they were going to really prosecute Valentino for this really big deal. The Valentino spent their honeymoon in Palm Springs at the Palm Springs Hotel. The hotel at that time was under the ownership of sisters Cornelia and Florilla White. Florilla, a friend of the newlyweds, hosted the couple in her cottage. And she said that, no, no, he never, they never consummated, that actually Florilla was in the bedroom with Winifred or Natasha Rambova the night of their wedding. So they never actually consummated it. It wasn't a real wedding, so he couldn't be found guilty. But as it turns out, the Sheik actually did spend a lot of time here in the desert though not with any of his wives. Uh, Valentino was a frequent visitor to Palm Springs. He was actually friends, pretty good friends, with a, a hermit that lived in Palm Canyon named Pester. Uh, we have a few photographs of them together. Uh, Pester is usually playing a homemade guitar of some sort, and they're in front of Pester's little hut that he had uh, in Palm Canyon, and they seem to be pretty good friends. He came out to Palm Springs many times. So was Valentino a bigamist? Or were the marriages of the movie star all just a front? 
no one really knows. Rudolph Valentino died in 1926 at the age of 31. Just about the time silent pictures and silent picture stars were fading away. But we do know the stars were already coming to the desert in 1921, and so were their scandals. Coming up next in our special presentation of Our Desert Past, we're going to take you to the races. But first, did you know that Indian Wells got its name from this well? That was a watering stop for horses and wagon trains making their way through the desert along the Bradshaw stage line, now known as Highway 111. We'll be right back. This is real buttermilk. Where real biscuits come from, this is made from scratch. Now get two sausage, egg, and cheese biscuits for $3.50 at Carl's Jr. The holidays are here, and so is Toyotathon. Wrap up a great year-end deal on a reliable Toyota, like 0% APR financing on many of our most popular models. And every new Toyota comes with a two years or 25,000 miles no-cost maintenance plan. Now, save big with $3,000 factory cash back on a new 2015 Prius liftback. Yes, $3,000 cash back on the hybrid that started it all. Make the holidays happier at Toyotathon. Uh-oh. <laughs> Toyota, let's go places. When people ask us what makes Desert Alarm different, our answer is always the same. We offer top-of-the-line security at bottom-line prices. Hello, my name is Chris Medane. Back by popular demand, receive a complete security system package installed at no cost to you and no setup charges. And if you're not happy with your current provider, switch your service to Desert Alarm today and receive your first three months monitoring free. There is no better time to switch than now. Call today, 322-1562. It's Sit and Sleep's best holiday gift to you ever. Buy a luxury Serta mattress set and we'll upgrade your box spring to an adjustable base at no extra charge. Right now, we're liquidating our 2015 inventory by slashing up to 50% off America's best brands, plus sleep interest-free for one full year. Give yourself the gift of a great night's sleep with an adjustable base at no extra charge during Sit and Sleep's year-end clearance sale. Since sleep will beat anyone's advertised price, or your mattress is free! All the flavors of a great steakhouse, now on a burger. The Steakhouse Thick Burger. Onion strings, blue cheese, and A1 sauce on 100% Black Angus beef. Only at Carl's Jr. Welcome back. Now, I'm sure you know that the Coachella Valley doesn't have any horse racing tracks, but for a time, it looked like we might not have one but two horse racing venues. Here's a look back. Two equestrian projects were conceived, but neither ever completed in the 1950s. Two horse tracks, two different locations, one for quarter horses and one for thoroughbreds. One would have been called the Desert Turf Club and the other, the Palm Springs Turf Club. The first, the Desert Turf Club, planned to build a one mile oval track with a quarter mile straight stretch, especially designed for racing quarter horses. It would have been located on land in Rancho Mirage, just off Bob Hope Drive, at the site where Sunnyland sits today. The second, the Palm Springs Turf Club racetrack, would have been just off Highway 111 between Palm Springs and Cathedral City, that one for thoroughbred. Well, there were two ideas. Um, they were basically the same idea Del Mar had. You build a racetrack, people will come. The Desert Turf Club did break ground in 1957, but by 1958, investors, which included Valley pioneer Frank Bogert, ran into money trouble. And by 1959, the project fell apart. And finally, um, Mr. Bogarty, that was his name, uh, who owned Desert Air, he realized that the land he was going to put up for this investment and we are talking about prime Rancho Mirage land, was worth more than any other of the other investors. So he backed out. When he backed out with the, um, with, with the land, then the whole investment pretty much fell apart. Both projects sparked mass meetings and debates. Hearings began in 1954 with the California Horse Racing Board. Evidence was offered on behalf of the Palm Springs Turf Club coupled with many objections to the project. The California Horse Racing Board ruled against the Palm Springs Turf Club, ending the hope for a thoroughbred racetrack. Two tracks would have been too much. Even but both investors knew that it was a gold mine. So each one was trying to make sure that their track was the one that was built. 
And because of that, neither one was great. And it may surprise you that Palm Springs was once a stop on the World Grand Prix car racing circuit. And like all things Palm Springs, the celebrities came out to play with the legends of the racing world. The first Palm Springs road races were held on a hay bale lined course at the Palm Springs Airport from 1951 to 1958, with city streets used as the straightaways. They started in 1950 and attracted the biggest names in racing. Carol Shelby came out, Jack McAfee, and they were both champions, of course. Uh, they raced Ferraris, they raced Maseratis, and it was primarily at the airport. So they would they came out with a track along the airport route and then people would just line up on the sidelines. I mean it was dangerous. The races continued into the 1960s after becoming a national car race and the amateurs and celebrities for the most part were left behind. And they had all sorts of different classes of cars, so different size engines, different um, categories and whatnot. And they a lot of people came out and this was a big deal. This was on the circuit. Palm Springs was a stop on the circuit for the road races in those days. But in its heyday, the Palm Springs road race was all part of the Wild West image of our desert oasis. And yes, Hollywood, which was already here playing golf and tennis and polo, came out for the races, most notably James Dean. James Dean took third place in 1955, moving to second place when a driver was disqualified. He was driving a Porsche, but contrary to popular lore, it wasn't the one that he drove in his fatal car crash later that same year. Steve McQueen tested his skills here in the desert, as did Clark Gable. Each year, there was a race queen. And like all of our events, past and present, the Palm Springs Road Race had a special place in the seasonal calendar. There were a few attempts to bring the racing world back to the desert. In 1986, retired Formula One drivers who had retired to Palm Springs tried to revive the race. And for a short time, in the mid-1990s, there was another attempt. But in 1996, after a race had shut down large parts of downtown Palm Springs, it all proved too much for our growing city. The road race in the 1990s was, could not sustain itself because it was, A, too dangerous, too many people still in Palm Springs, um, or too many people had come to Palm Springs. They're just, it was not feasible to close down all the streets and to cause potential damage to property and people. So the Palm Springs Road Race has become one more thing now exclusively a part of our desert past. Coming up next, Walt Disney in the desert. But first, did you know that when this historic picture of the three presidents playing golf together at the Bob Hope Classic was taken back in 1995, that President Ford would go on to strike a spectator, breaking his finger. Not to be outdone, President George Herbert Walker Bush would go on to hit two spectators. We'll be right back. I'm Dan Ball. Coming up on KMIR News Monday morning beginning at 5 a.m., some tips to save you a few bucks in our Money Monday report. Chance of snow on Christmas? You heard me right. Details Monday morning at 5 a.m. Hit us with your best shot. I'm Ginger Jeffries. We would love to show your weather photos on KMIR News. Email them to myphoto at KMIR.com and watch for them on KMIR News. KMIR News, where the news comes first. This holiday season, give a gift that will last a lifetime. Find jewelry from El Paseo Jewelers. From the most exquisite diamonds to precious gemstones, the widest selection of fine quality jewelry at competitive prices. From all of us at El Paseo Jewelers, we want to wish you and your family a wonderful holiday season. Light up the holidays with something special from El Paseo Jewelers. Visit our new location on El Paseo by San Pablo next to Starbucks. El Paseo Jewelers. Make forever. Start today. This holiday season, get ready for mystery. What's in the trunk? Nothing. Romance. 18 inch alloys. You remembered. Family fun. Everybody squeeze in. Walk anyone. And non stop action. <laughs> it's the event you don't want to miss. It's the season of Audi sales event. Get up to a $2,500 bonus for highly qualified lessees on select Audi models. Wondering which mattress is right for you? Come to a Mathis Sleep Center and check out EcoComfort, our best-selling mattresses. With innovative ice silk covers that stay cool all night, eco-friendly foam that gives you perfectly contoured support, and a 25-year warranty at about half the cost of the nationally advertised brands. Come get yours right now, and we'll even throw in a gift card worth up to $300. 
the best value on the best night's sleep you've ever had, only at a Mathis Sleep Center near you. Disneyland in Anaheim is celebrating its 60th year as the happiest place on earth. And like so many things in show business, there is a direct connection to the desert, a place that Walt Disney loved until the day he died. The earliest remembered appearance of Walt Disney in the desert was in 1936, when the blossoming genius played polo on the grounds where Palm Springs Stadium now stands. Disney was 35. Mickey Mouse was eight. Twelve years later, Walt and Lillian Disney bought their first home at Smoke Tree Ranch in Palm Springs. Walt called it his happy place. Residents feared at the time that Walt would try to change Smoke Tree Ranch to look more like Beverly Hills. But the fears were unfounded as the Disneys fit right in. Walt became a member of the board and was a true lover of horses and the desert. Disney became fast friends with legendary Palm Springs mayor and actual cowboy Frank Bogart. Bogart and Disney rode together on an annual mounted journey. Bogart said in his book of Walt Disney, when you camp with a guy, you really get to know him. He was the best. But six years later, Walt Disney was trying to get financing for his dream of an amusement park like no other. Biggest problem? Well, I say it's been my biggest problem all my life is money. It takes a lot of money to make these dreams come true. From the very start, it was a problem of getting the money to open Disneyland. About $17 million it took, and uh, we had everything mortgaged. So Walt and his brother Roy sold off everything they could in an attempt to raise $17 million to build Disneyland, including Walt and Lillian's beloved Smoke Tree Ranch home. As he was raising money, Walt offered several of his neighbors at Smoke Tree Ranch a chance to invest in the new park, and by most accounts, none did. The bulk of the financing for Disneyland would eventually come from ABC Television in exchange for the TV rights to a Disney-produced weekly show, which kicked off one year before the park would actually open. Walt Disney's Disneyland. When you wish upon a star. But Walt and Lillian Disney's love of the desert and Walt's love of playing cowboy was strong. And once it was apparent Disneyland would be a huge success, the Disneys immediately built a new and bigger home at Smoke Tree Ranch. That home still exists at Smoke Tree, now called Disney Hall. It remains one of several reminders of Walt Disney and his love of the desert. In fact, Walt's love of Smoke Tree Ranch is visible on every statue of Walt and Mickey holding hands. The statue is called Friends, and it's in every Disney park. And if you look real close, the brand of Smoke Tree Ranch is emblazoned on Walt Disney's necktie. The STR is Walt's lasting tribute to Palm Springs and Smoke Tree Ranch. Coming up next, we're going to take you to Palm Springs' hottest nightclub back in the day. But first, did you know that the original KMIR television station broadcast tower was located on top of the old El Mirador Hotel in Palm Springs? In fact, the MIR in KMIR comes from the first three letters in Mirador. We'll be back. Do you think you have the best holiday lights on your block? Now's your chance to have your home featured on KMIR Holiday Lights. Brought to you by General Air Conditioning and Plumbing. Send your photo or video to lights at KMIR.com. And our next featured home could be yours. In your dreams, name a public place where you suddenly find yourself naked. You said Disneyland. Hey, Mickey Mouse, it's me. I'm Jerry Gugino, founder of Poteri Solar. We don't call you on the telephone. We don't ring your doorbell at supper time. I guess you could say we do things the old fashioned way. Call now and learn how you can save $2,000 instantly. Also, take advantage of our 30% tax credit. Just when you think you know where it's going, it takes you someplace else. Covered California is here to help Californians who need health insurance get it. Because it's more than just health care, it's life care. 
It's Sit and Sleep's best holiday gift to you ever. Buy a luxury Serta mattress set and we'll upgrade your box spring to an adjustable base at no extra charge. Right now, we're liquidating our 2015 inventory by slashing up to 50% off America's best brands, plus sleep interest-free for one full year. Give yourself the gift of a great night's sleep with an adjustable base at no extra charge during Sit and Sleep's year-end clearance sale. Sit and Sleep will beat anyone's advertised price or your mattress is free! Wishing you the very best. Happy holidays from KMIR. Back in the heyday of Hollywood in the desert, several hotels, restaurants, and nightclubs were the stomping grounds of the stars. And one of those establishments was the Chi Chi Club, an amazing night spot from a long gone era. Once located at 217 North Palm Canyon Drive on land leased from Palm Springs pioneer Zaddy Bunker, the Chi Chi Club was the place during the Hollywood in Palm Springs heyday. A crowd of elegant locals, visitors, movie stars, and movie moguls, all drawn to the dazzling atmosphere of Erwin Schumann's Chi Chi in the heart of 1950s Palm Springs. Remarkably, the Chi Chi actually started way before what would be considered as Palm Springs' golden era of celebrities. It started in 1936 as a small little establishment by a man named Erwin Schumann and another man named Jack Freeman. When they first opened it was called Freeman's Desert Grill. It was a teeny tiny little place and it was inside an even smaller building. And like the city itself, the Freeman Grill grew and changed. In 1948, the Chi Chi was born. By 1948, Schumann was in complete control and had expanded the, the building and the establishment immensely. They ended up with a theater that could seat 750 people for live performances and another additional dining room that could seat 250. So it was the biggest place to go. The performers A-list Hollywood all the way with the country's biggest names performing quite often for an audience of equal or greater fame. Every single person from that era that you can imagine performed there at some point. And we're talking Louis Armstrong, Lena Horne, Ella Fitzgerald, uh, Milton Berle. I don't think we'll let him sing. He does what he wants, if you know Sinatra. This is actual audio tape Sinatra of Milton Berle performing at the Chi Chi Club with Frank Sinatra in the front row with his buddies heckling Mr. Television. I don't like high hopes. I don't like it. But like many things from that long ago era, the Chi Chi Club didn't last and was gone by the mid-1960s. After it changed hands, it became many things. It was um, a one-night performance of the unsinkable Molly Brown. It was a wax museum. It was even an adult theater at a time, a very short time where you could have dinner and watch an adult movie. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't want to do that? Did you know that Albert Einstein was a frequent visitor to the desert? The genius stayed at the Willows in Palm Springs in the early 1930s. We'll have more when we come back. Ever notice how some stations in town love to tell you how they'll help you understand the news? At KMIR News, we give you a little more credit than that. We know you understand the news. It's our job to cover the news of your day, period. KMIR, where the news comes first. Hit us with your best shot. I'm Ginger Jeffries. We would love to show your weather photos on KMIR News. Email them to myphoto at KMIR.com and watch for them on KMIR News. KMIR News, where the news comes first. Hi, welcome to LG's Prime Steakhouse. At LG's Prime Steakhouse, we'll provide you with culinary wonders. Choose from our wide selection of entrees, from the freshest seafood right up to our famous 100% USDA Prime Steaks, including our famous LG's Jewel in the Crown. Compliment your meal with a glass of wine. Same great steaks, same great service. LG's Prime Steakhouse, it's the art of the steak. Meet the Moors. We're the Moore family, and we're always looking for ways to enjoy more. So we called Time Warner Cable and got even more than we expected. Call now to get more. More speed. More TV shows and movies on demand. More places to make more unlimited calls. <laughs> Call 1-844-513-9095.
For $89.99 a month, you'll get 30 meg internet, hundreds of HD channels, and unlimited calling to international destinations. We find more good things every day. More ways to watch more shows. On more Wi-Fi connected devices in our house. Time Warner Cable made switching easy with a one hour arrival window. They even made sure all of our connections were up and running before they left. Why settle for less when, when you, you can, can get, get more? Call 1-844-513-9095. You'll get free installation, TV equipment, and epics included. And for a limited time, get a free trial of Showtime for one year. Call for more now. That's going to do it for this special presentation of our desert past. Hope you enjoyed looking back at just a few of the amazing stories about our beautiful valley. And heck, I didn't even mention the playground of the presidents. Good night.